Well, hello there and welcome to the conversation room. We are going to engage in a very powerful conversation uh, over the next uh, 40 minutes to an hour. And uh, with me, I have two prophetic voices that I love and trust. We have uh, Dr. James Gall from God Encounters uh, Network. And uh, actually, uh, God has just downloaded some very fresh prophetic insight to him that I think is going to be really helpful to all of us. And then, of course, we have Stephen Springer. Uh, Stephen has been a good friend of both James and I for many years and has just uh, moved his family in this last year or so down to Dallas. And we're excited to have you uh, not only as a strong prophetic voice, but we so appreciate your apostolic call on your life too, Stephen. And it's a blessing to have you inside this conversation today. And the reason why we are having um, these conversations, the conversation room, is because we want you to come away conversing about God and taking the conversation out, uh, taking the Word of God out, sharing it with friends, sharing it with family, and pondering things that maybe you never pondered before. And in the conversation room, sometimes um, different guests will share uh, different things that might uh, be totally opposite to what another guest uh, feels or believes. And I actually welcome that because I feel that um, in order for us to be a strong body, that we need to respect the voice of God in one another and um, that we need to hear. We need to have a voice or uh, ears to hear what the Spirit is saying as long as there is love as long as there is respect, as long as there is, is um, you know, just that, that, that camaraderie of running together for Jesus, with Jesus, and on behalf of his glorious name, um, that we are going to build each other. And so oftentimes you will, you know, look at only one side of the coin, but, it, you know, the truth is that there's different images on both sides of the coin. And so you need to look at both in order to get a fuller picture. And so I really enjoy the different perspectives, the different convictions that our guests carry. And uh, it's just, a, you know, a real um, atmosphere of respect amongst us. And so we want that for you too. So if you're making comments, which we invite, love to hear your thoughts on things, but just make sure that your comments are in love. We're not going to be bashing people or being disrespectful. Uh, we are going to honor each other. So we want you to do that as you make comments. And most people that comment on the uh, conversation room are exactly of that heart. So we want to cheer you on and celebrate you for that. But James, I want to start with you um, because God has given you some fresh revelation. And I just want to tell the audience, you and I have been friends for for many years, and you've been a real friend in the battle for me when I was going through one of the most difficult times in my uh, life in ministry. And you and your wife at the time, um, of course, Michael Ann's gone on to glory for those of you that don't know, but you were just uh, great friends in that battle, and I want to thank you for that. But I have known in all the years that I've known you, and even before knowing you by reputation, uh, you are one of the most accurate prophets I know of in this day. And when you say the Lord has revealed something to you, I listen. And so I want our audience to really listen because God's given you some fresh insight that will um, position us to pray, to, to um, uh, draw close to God. So why don't you share what the Lord's been speaking to you? Hey, thank you so much, Patricia. And obviously, uh, <clears throat> I don't know if I want to say I claim Stephen before you do, <laughs> but uh, we have um, we are not of a clan right now that is in opposition. This is a cluster of uh, cooperation and a culture of honor. Mm -hmm. I want to give us a template as I unfold something. It comes. Oh my goodness. I have a new life verse. It's from Daniel chapter 12, verse three. Mm -hmm. I feel that so rising in me right now. There are those who will gain insight. They will grow, they will gain insight. They will shine bright like the expanse of heaven and they will lead many to righteousness. That 
is my new life verse. It could be for the next decade. It's the time we are in. God is looking for people who gain, grow in. They don't stagnate and stalemate. They gain insight. But it says they're going to shine bright like the expanse of heaven. Obviously, darkness. And we are in historically. For my lifetime, which Patricia and I are right at the same age in our lifetime. This is historically, I think, the most complex, mm -hmm. difficult time I have known in my lifetime. These are called historic moments. These are called defining moments. They don't happen every year. They happen every so often. We are in a global historic defining moment. And in a defining moment, it's a changing room. Mm -hmm. And in a changing room, you go in one way, you come out another. Now, the picture frame, Daniel chapter seven says this, I, Daniel, was contemplating on the vision. But what was it that he saw? He saw like four beasts coming out of the sea. Today, what often happens? is that we get what I call revelation fixation, and we stop right there. The four beasts coming out of the sea. Did Daniel see it? Yes, but he didn't stop looking. And many of us stop at the revival of evil. We stop at the darkness. We stop at the warning. We stop at the judgment word. I'm not saying they're not true, but I'm saying, that's not the end of the matter. So good. I want you to know we are to be a people who gain insight. What? Hope solutions for the difficult times. So it's then Daniel says, and I kept on looking. It says, and I kept on contemplating. And he sees more evil. And then he says, and I kept on meditating. And then it says, and I kept on looking. I kept on watching until I saw the oh, Ancient wow. of Days. Yeah. So on. I want to challenge us that our judgment words, proper or improper, oh, listen, some of these are absolutely of God, but they do not have the final word. So They right. do not have the final manner. And we must be like a Daniel in our generation. Yes. And we keep on looking. We keep on contemplating. We keep on watching because we're looking for the redemptive solution, not just partnering in declaring the pandemic of fear. So one of the major problems we're dealing with today is the pandemic of fear. Mm -hmm. There's my opening. Now, Recently, I've been having a series of dreams that stir me to my core, my core, because I grew up in rural Missouri in a little town of 259 people. And I know what that's like to live in a little place. I know what it's like to grow up in poverty. My daddy got a sixth grade education, was kicked out of the house when he was 12, and was homeless. That's a part of my background, folks. I don't only come from a prayer background of my mother. I came from this other abuse background. So I want you to know, if God can start a new storyline in my life, he can start a new storyline in yours, rural America. I know what it's like, because I was born in 1952. For rural America to wave flags and be patriotic and have Easter parades and Christmas parades and the church being the cornerstone of the community. But I had dreams recently. We're rural America, but you might be watching from Argentina. You might be watching from Africa. Well, I know that this will relate in any situation. In Canada, I saw in a dreams of abandoned homes in little 
towns in rural America. And then they became filled with squatters and they were turned into meth houses, you know? And the word of the Lord came to me and said, you have let rural America go to pot. And I thought, boy, is that ever the truth? Mm -hmm. Because it's not today what it was when I was growing up. But I kept on looking. I kept on inquiring because I'm going like, it doesn't take a prophet to know that. That's a clip in time. That's like, oh, that's knowledge. So I go, God, but what are you saying about it? You've let rural America go to pot. And I got this. And he says, but rural America is like the heart of the nation. And as rural America goes, so will go the entire nation. And he said, I want to heal the heart land. Wow. I want to heal the heart of this nation. I want to save America. But one of the keys is healing the land. Yes. of rural America. But I didn't stop there. I inquired of the Lord and I go, God, surely there's more you have to say. The next day I have another set of dreams. I see urban cities and the Lord promised me something. Listen, I'm casting a big vision. I saw something. I saw urban centers where there was in every major city of the world, authentic apostolic hubs raised up in every major urban center of the world, but they weren't only equipping centers. They weren't only a place of connection and family and teaching. They were hospitals. These apostolic hubs in every major city of the world was family. They were the army, but in the times in which we live and where we're headed, they became hospitals in the Lord. And a hospital has an emergency room. And then I saw out of these apostolic equipping centers in every major city of the world, new circuit riders, new circuit riders. They were getting sent. They were being sent out to where? A mission field called country living. They were oh. sent into the mission field of rural America because God cares about the heart and he wants the heart of the nation to be healed. Wow. I'll try to speed this up. I am filled with this right now because I've only shared it for the first time on my own insight program just an hour ago. So then I keep inquiring of the Lord and I see circuit riders being sent out from these apostolic hubs they started, here was the word in the dream. It's an old word from the 1800s, brush fires. The circuit riders sent out from the urban centers were given a heart of God <laughs> for the rural America. And the circuit riders started brush arbors, brush fires that turned into revival. I saw then in dreams, because I kept inquiring, I kept asking, I saw public, I saw prophetic worship teams going to public squares in oh, rural America. And believe me, it was not contended over. It was not a governmental like, oh, we can't do this and we can't do that. No. Why? Because they wanted it. They, oh my God, they wanted this. I saw worship teams going to public squares, leading in public worship. I saw healings breaking out. Yes in rural America and, and across in Canada. And I saw the worship teams in the public radically worshiping God, healing evangelists sent out from cities of circuit riders, from the hospitals of the apostolic teams. Then I saw, I kept asking God, I kept asking God, is there more? Is there more? Is it only revival fires? Fires start, fires go out. And then I got this in another dream. There will be a people movement that will occur. I will put in the heart of city dwellers to move even, <laughs> to move to the country. Wow. 
Wow. And they will make even a greater difference there. Because just think of it. If you can teach the Bible and you're in a church of 50, you're going to be the best Bible teacher they got. <laughs> I mean, you might not think you're the best prophet where you're at right now in the mega church, but you would be in a church of 100. And I saw a people movement of people gravitating then connected to cities, but they wanted to breathe. They wanted a place where their children could play safe. And there was a returning, not an exiting, to country wow. living. And then I saw in another dream, because I kept asking God for more. Folks, I'm giving you a lesson right now. Don't stop. Keep asking for the more. Keep asking for the more. So then it goes further because it goes from where it is. You have let rule America go to pot to where I eventually saw like gas stations. I saw grocery stores coming back. I saw then like small, small cities of, of, of abandoned manufacturing plants. Mm. And then I saw a people movement. And then I saw this desire to restore manufacturing jobs in the country out in more, you know, rural settings. And it's about revival, reformation and transformation. And so I'm burning with wow. a new word. James, and it's about that is so saving amazing. America. Wow. <laughs> but, James, I love it. Yeah. I just want to say is that I just want to take everyone back and please replay <laughs> this and listen to it because that whole teaching you gave on Daniel before you started, I've never I've never heard it in that way. But it is so true because like Right now, because so many people are getting warning dreams and, you know, dreams that could breed fear, what Daniel did, I just want everyone to catch this, please catch it. What he did is he looked at what he was seeing, but then he looked some more and he kept looking until he saw the Lord. He kept seeing until he saw the throne. He kept seeing until he saw God's authority. I want you to get that and maybe later just replay this and get it, get it, get it. This is a divine revelation. But I, I want to say right now, James, I'm stirred by your, <sighs> by your vision and, and by God's heart for rural America. And when we started out here in Arizona, that's how we started our team. Mm -hmm. We went out to um, you know, like I sent, you know, Robert and Bart, all those guys, I just sent them out to do little house meetings in abandoned places where there was hardly anyone there. And I said, you go out there and you love on the people and you pour yourself into them and, 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 and just minister and great things happen and healing of people's hearts and wounds. And right. that took place. It was amazing. So I just want to say to our audience right now, if you are in rural America, I know so many ministries that would probably be very happy to go and serve you just contact me at info at patriciaking.com uh, Robert Hodgkin actually um, answers those emails and let you know let us know that you would like ministry in your rural area and that you would be willing to set it up because someone's gonna have to set it up but if you will be willing to set it up I'm pretty sure I can mobilize people that will go and minister in your area. And let's, let's, let's respond to this word. We're not just going to sit back and say, wow, God's really speaking about rural America. We're going to act on the word uh, because faith uh, not only comes by hearing, I'm getting faith right now just by hearing this, but faith without works is dead. So we have to act on that word. So if you're in rural America, you're in a very isolated place, I, I will personally try my very best to get ministers out there to do revival meetings or to pray, to do sure. inner healing ministry, whatever we can do to help you. And this is also where e-church comes in. Mm -hmm. This is where part of the new wine skin for the new wine is yeah. the digital church. Yeah. Because we can reach any village, any people group, any place that people feel cut off. Yeah. They have internet. 
I tell you, it is all the more the E-Church. Let's expand the vision. It is also about healing the land. And it is about, as Oral Roberts said, releasing God's voice where God's voice is small. Mm -hmm. Right That's on. Really I just want to say uh, to our viewers, I know a number of you, because you've already contacted us on this, have heard Jeremiah Johnson's word that he released a couple days ago, um, just kind of putting down um, uh, internet okay. church and conferences and that. I'm a really good friend of Jeremiah Johnson, and I really respect his, his ministry. So we feel differently about that. And so we had some good communication back and forth. And so next week, next Wednesday, him and I are going to go live and mm -hmm. wrestle this out a little bit because there's things that he said that we need to, to hear. We can't respond by fear, by staying out of gatherings and, you know, then just, you know, hi hiding out in caves. So we need to hear yeah. what he's receiving. Um, but I, I think there's things that we need to say about the voice of the Lord who is promoting yeah. online church and it is just exploding. It is exploding. And um, Jeremiah did share statistics. I've got different statistics, but um, the, it is totally, totally exploding. And people are getting so on fire for God and um, God is initiating it. I know God spoke to me about Internet Church back in 2008 and there was no pandemic at that time. Right. It was a, a mandate from the Lord. And so uh, we're going to be having a very good, beautiful conversation uh, two people who really love and respect each other, but we definitely have some um, polarized views on that where when we share it, it should bring together a real beautiful picture. So don't get all afraid when you hear, you know, someone's, you know, what they believe is their conviction or their their uh, concern. Let's just go to the Lord until we get the whole picture. But Stephen, really I'd love to... Oh, sorry. Did you? One thing too. I, I even as I was listening to that, to that, uh, those dreams, James, and mm -hmm. I reminded of even just a few weeks back when we had the tropical storm, Cristobal, <laughs> and Cristobal literally went right up the heartland, and that whole tropical storm literally right. brought flooding and refreshing and all that kind of stuff. There was rains that came to places that needed rain, and and, and to me, it's it's such a prophetic picture of what God is doing in the way of that, the fact that he would actually do this, whole, and it was literally right in the heartland of the United States. And I think that's the first thing you said, James, is that, you know, the, the name Cristobal actually means Christ bearer or one who bears Christ's heart. And the fact that this storm, and there's a storm that's coming, and that's what the Lord, he was even speaking, that there's winds that are beginning to blow, Patricia. And, and you know, they were saying, it's going to become a very windy season. And I saw this in heading uh, from, from the National Oceanic uh, and, uh, uh, Atmospheric uh, Association had posted that that this year actually I, I may actually even have that little article. Um, but basically, their headline was is is they're predicting an above average actually hurricane season, and and not that it's about bringing winds that are to bring destruction. It's about I believe even in the spirit realm, there's winds that Jesus is releasing right now. There's storms that He's releasing right now, and again, they aren't storms to destroy. They're storms to bring about a new season and a new day. There's a refreshing that God wants to bring in the land. And I so agree with that, that the heartland is gonna be the eruption point. I believe it's gonna be one of the main eruption points of revival actually here in the United States is that there, there's something that's been crying out. And 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 with that, even as, as we as the church have just chose to humble ourselves in a way, a way and just Perfect. to seek his face, there's something that God wants to do with that, with the healing of the land. and. When the land gets healed, it will, it'll respond. Mm -hmm. And I believe that it, with that, I mean, that's part of why we're seeing all the creation groaning. It's, mm -hmm. it's groaning because it wants to see us right. come forth as the mature sons and daughters of God. So I, I'm just, I'm encouraged that God, God really is doing something in the midst of, 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 of trial and pandemic. We know that it's the heart of God to tur turn all things for good. Amen. And that's what he's doing right now. I I I'm so encouraged, actually, what I'm seeing in the, in the realm of the spirit and even dreams and, and visions and things that the Lord has been speaking. In the midst of turmoil, God is up to good because he can't help himself. And I think that part of that is even we as, as the sons and daughters of the Most High actually 
really gain that vantage point that we begin to see from, from heaven to earth rather than from earth to heaven. And we, we assume that place, I believe even as Paul, you know, discusses actually in Ephesians chapter two, that, that we actually assume that place of being seated with Christ in the heavenly places, we begin to see what the Father's doing. And what I like to say is he's he's giving us permission, and this is kind of hokey, but I'm gonna do it. He's giving us permission to put on goggles, <laughs> to see through the eyes of love. Mm -hmm. And see, that's really what it's about, that we become those ambassadors of his hope, the ambassador of his grace, and the ability to see how the Father sees that, that we actually see through those eyes of love and what the Father's up to, Boy, that, that's when we're going to see some amazing things happen, Patricia. I, I'm, I'm really excited. Yeah, me too. Um, excited and yet very sober at the same time. Um, yes. I, um, I had an encounter with the Lord on June 27th, early in the morning. Woke me up just after four with a very foreboding presence. And I said, Lord, what, what, what is going on? And he revealed to me the vulnerability of America as a nation right now. And it was like I was seeing the nation with custard. Like it was like mm. custard. It could be easily broken into because mm. of the, it was fragile because of, you know, everything that's going on. We don't need to be prophetic to see that there is a lot of, you know, hatred, confusion, um, dishonor, rebellion, you know, harm. There's a lot of that, but there's also a lot of love going on in the nation too. But we have That's to right. look at the whole picture. We can't just be like a proverbial ostrich and bury our head in the sand and not realize the times that we're living in because there's things that we do need to be alert to but not taken out by. So um, he showed me the nation and then he said, because of the vulnerability internally, it's setting the nation up to be externally vulnerable for outside attack against it. And it was mm. not like, you know, anyone who knows me knows that I don't get those kind of words. I mean, my favorite prophetic word from God for all people is God loves you with an everlasting love. You know, that's kind of where I, I, I live. But this was like, this shook my being. And he said, I need you to start a firewall, a mm. firewall of prayer around this nation. And uh, he said, pray day and night, day and night. And I checked with a few prophets, including uh, James and Cindy Jacobs and others. I said, am I on target uh, with what the Spirit is saying? I wanted to know what other prophets were getting. And we got endorsement, uh, strong endorsement saying, yes, this is it, go. And there's a lot of ministries that are doing a lot of prayer, convocations, gatherings, uh, mandates. And I, I want to say to our viewers, join every single one of them if you can. Um, these uh, prayer meetings are very important. I know that James is stirring a lot of prayer. I mean, almost every ministry I know is engaged in prayer right now. It's the breath of the Spirit calling the body Amen. to prayer. And Amen. honestly, I, do, I just, I know God is not giving these heavy, heavy alerts, putting us in a prayer position. Okay. Um, calling us into a place where we're going to fight and contend to sit back and say, well, you know, I'm sure glad you put all that effort into it, but I wasn't planning on doing anything good anyways. That's just not who he is. And so with all these warnings that we are getting, it is an invitation for us to respond in faith to a good God and to position ourselves. If there is are, are issues in our life that we need to make right, make them right. If there are, you know, if there is the conviction of the spirit regarding sin in our life, sinful behavior, deal with that behavior. This is not a time to fool around because right. I saw a recurring vision since that time. I had a recurring vision of two baskets. One of them was filling up with sin and rebellion. And the other one was filling up with prayer and repentance. Amen. And the Lord said, one of them is going to create a tipping point. In other words, this is a time when we need to fill this one because when it tips, the potential that we have in front of us right now is to give birth to the greatest awakening that has ever been seen or heard of in biblical or church history, the greatest revival, the greatest harvest, all combined in one. That is our potential right now. That is the invitation that God is giving to us. So um, I just want to encourage all of you who are watching to be in prayer right now. Um, if you are not on the prayer wall yet, uh, go to firewallusa.com, firewallusa.com and sign up. Jesus said, could you not tarry for one hour? Mm -hmm. 
And so I'm, I'm asking you to pray for an hour. If you can do an hour a day, that's awesome. If you can do an hour a week, that's fine, or a, an hour a month. But sign up for an hour and invest. Make an investment into the future of our nation. Because what we do right now is going to affect our children, our grandchildren, our great-grandchildren. This, can't, this is not time to be selfish. This is not time to be at ease. This is a time to labor in the Lord by grace, by his empowerment, by his love, motivated by love, motivated by faith and not by fear, to make a way for our coming generations to live in the goodness of God. We've just come out of 70 years, from 1950 to 2020, 70 mm. years of the most affluent times um, in, in American history, the world history, probably. And um, this, is, this has been a very beautiful time to be alive. So what we want to do is see acceleration of the goodness of God, but it's going to take positioning. And Stephen, you um, sent me this word Yes. by text the other day and it said there will be another wave of turmoil even in late october the nations will rage even a civil war against righteousness justice and against absolute truth that is found in christ jesus but and here we go with intercession and watchmen on the wall there will be a shalom that will happen in a moment. So oh, no. I just want to just say as a model, what Stephen has said here, he says he's, he's, he's issuing a warning, an alert, to, so that we'll be sober. But then he's pointing us to God's redemptive nature. God is yeah. always, always, always redemptive. And I just love that. And you said, um, God said, don't roll over and take it. Arise, shine, and release the glory. There will be a ceasefire in the realm of darkness. God is equipping his saints with shields and with swords. There's a glory and grace being released. It's just awesome. So I wanted to thank you for that. And maybe you might want to fill in some of the blanks or anything else that God has, has shown you about that. Yeah, and you know, I think even as as we're all being invited, because God really is looking for ones that will co-labor with him. And that's why he's giving us these, these dreams, these warnings and different things, is because he wants us to partner with the reality of his kingdom. And I think that that's where we're being invited, actually, as intercessors, ones that will be gap standards, that when we get these words, I, I like how the Lord said it, don't roll over and take it rise and shine and see that's part of what what's being awakened I, that i've seen even in these last few months like again with the firewall and with so many other prayer initiatives there has been a gur that's been released inside the hearts of intercessors for such a time as this yeah i mean for sure. we can look in history the, there's never been the kind of prayer that's happening on the planet right now ever right. ever that's ever true. ever and and i believe that's part of where we're being invited even into the deeper things because even in jeremiah 33 3 it says cry out to me, call to me, and I'm going to answer you. And I'm going to show you great and mighty things that you do not even know. And that's part of it too, is that he's looking for interaction. He's looking for really honestly, just intimacy with his sons and daughters, because there's secrets that he wants to share and reveal. But part of it, 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 it takes relationship. And that's what I feel like we're really being invited into is that he's looking for ones that will be the intercessors. He's looking for ones that will be the watchmen upon the wall that will not stop making mention of the Lord day and night, night and day, because there's a glory that has to be revealed and released in the planet. And again, if we choose to arise and shine, there's a glory that literally gets released in the planet. And I think that that's part of it too, is that 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 the world, even though like in Isaiah 60, it says, you know, that the darkness covers the people, even deep darkness, the whole earth, never mind the darkness. We just need to choose to and fix our gaze upon the King of Kings. Not that we ignore the issues that are going on the planet. That's what I'm not saying at all. I'm saying is that now he's given us the wisdom and the insight to make that intercession, to literally shift things in a moment. And I'm reminded of actually in, in Mark, we see the, the story where Jesus says, hey, let us go to the other side. So there's the prophetic word. And then they all get in a boat and with other boats traveling around with them, and they're going to the other side. And Jesus, who, who he is, is, is the pin, Prince of Peace, the, the one that just, he lays his head down upon a pillow and he begins to rest in the back of the boat. In the midst of him resting in the back of the boat at complete peace with himself and with whatever's going on, all of a sudden there's this demonic storm that rises up. 
And we know that his disciples begin to freak out, and we've seen that actually on the planet today. Jesus is not shaken, but he's shaken everything that can be shaken because what he's doing in this season is he's drawing them every one of us to the desire of nations. And so we see that even as his friends were freaking out, Jesus rises up after a simple comment, Peter, don't you care, Lord? I mean, that's silly. Don't you care that we're perishing? <laughs> don't you care we're dying? And he's like, whatever, come on, do you realize who I am? Do you remember the prophetic word I gave when we left the shoreline? But in that, he rose up with boldness and he spoke, shalom, be muzzled, and in a moment, there was a stillness. And I believe that, that that's the same kind of shalom that he's looking for, for sons and daughters, that if we would be willing to speak with our mouth and with the very breath of heaven, the reality that we're getting, the intel from the Father, something begins to change in the atmosphere, and he's looking for us to do that. Mm -hmm. And that's what I mean. I believe that, that there's going to be a ceasefire in the realm of the Spirit when we begin to unify in the oneness and one accord as the, as the bride of Christ, as the body of Christ making intercession and being those watchmen that watch. And when we've watched, we continue to watch. It's so good. It's so good. And give birth to the purposes of God. And um, when uh, Jesus stilled the storm, then he addressed his disciples and he says, why did you have no faith? You know, and that's the thing right now. Like they were afraid. Um, and, you know, of course, there's a natural fear if you see a storm rocking the boat. And I mean, that was a real circumstance. That wasn't something right. made up. It, it was really happening. Um, they really were actually in the natural, in a dangerous position. But it's just like what James was saying in the beginning. We have to look beyond that to the Lord who's sitting on the throne. And he was expecting them to take their authority that he had already um, invested into them and utilize that. And that's what we need to do today. We need need to align ourselves with God and release the victory that he is offering us. And the choice is ours. Even like you mentioned in uh, Jeremiah 33, 3, uh, I mean, Jeremiah was used by God in many ways to, to, to invite people to engage in the hope that God was offering them. But he was right. raised up in a time when the people of God were very, very rebellious and, and disobedient and sinful and all that. And of course, he was used to address that as well. But in the midst of all that, he was giving them this invitation, which unfortunately they didn't heed. And therefore, there was lamentation. <laughs> but um, <laughs> that's not going to be like, we don't have to choose that in this hour. But do we have to understand the 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 um, the soberness of this hour. Yes, we do do need to understand um, that this is not a time to just you know go about and live at ease without you know just walking with God in His heart and in His ways the right way. This is a time to get close to God. This is a time when everything else, if there's anything that is taking place over Him in our life, we need to deal with that because we're going to be inside of Him as He forges these trails, as He establishes His kingdom through us. And so we need to be positioned for that. And it's just awesome. James, do you yeah. have anything else you want to add into this? Yeah, I do. Um, you know, you brought up... Uh, Jeremiah Johnson's name, and I'm going to bring a little picture frame or perspective. Now, I have only talked on the phone briefly one time with him, and that was with you, Patricia, in Orlando when we were filming for a television show. Now, I've been watching. That's part of who I am and what I do. I watch to see what the Lord is doing. So can't, there's another perspective. Mm -hmm. It's a two-edged sword. Yep. It cuts this way, it cuts that way, but it's two edges. Yep. One person wields the sword this way. Another one wields it this way. Are they wrong? Is this one wrong and that one wrong? Or could they both be right, but they need to be brought together because it's the two-edged sword of the spirit? Exactly. So, Good. Since Pentecost in particular, I've been watching, knowing God, man, God was marking certain people. He was marking them to be voices in this next move of God. Now, I don't have a relationship with this amazing young man. I don't. 
but I know God's marked him mm -hmm, to, be one of, to be one of the voices that is going to rally people. So he might say, I'm over it. It's done. I'm like tired of all of this, like meeting online. What he could be saying is this canceling modality is wrong. Yeah. It was okay for a season. It's wrong. We got to go. Why does he say that? Because he's chosen mm -hmm. and marked to be one of the sent ones, the goers. I have already gone. Okay. I'm not saying my going season won't come back again, but my season is back in the upper room. Uh-huh to be behind the, the goers. Mm -hmm. Stephen is a goer. Mm -hmm. Stephen is a goer and he's a builder and he will build an eagle's nest in that whole Dallas Fort Worth area that that place, John Paul Jackson carried it. Wow. Others do and others have, but I know this man. And so he's being called to help build a corporiety of an eagle's nest where there's no competition zone. And one of the things he, God's marked him with a word, no competition. Amen. We will build together and we will build better together. I know Absolutely. this. And the Lord has marked this Jeremiah Johnson to go, go, go. So he's frustrated. He's frustrated in the sense of like, I'm over it. Then could it be a little out of balance on going like, well, that means, huh, well, but for some of us, this is still our time to go internet. It's our time to be a voice that could be heard, but to also champion these new circ Folks, he's a circuit rider. Mm -hmm. He's one of the circuit riders, okay? So I just wanna put a picture frame out there that's like, if you can be mature enough, you can hold two truths exactly. in diametrical opposition. <laughs> it's like a bicycle. One pedal, mm, not too good. They're in 180 degrees in, 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 in difference. How about free will pro and the providential sovereignty of God and, and then free choice? Oh, those are directly 180 degrees. But you put pressure on one and it creates emotion, and then you put a pressure on the other, and it takes truths in tension. You got to gain this kind of understanding, and then you will see we are really not in competition. We are really not against each other. We have truths held in tension, and maturity will eventually say, Oh, we need each other we need to each have other. forward motion. Now, my last little word comes from John chapter 21. While Stephen and you were interacting, my seer dimension opened up and, and he was talking about, you know, the boat and the storms and everything. But I saw the harvest. I saw the harvest and it's John 21 verse six after the resurrection and remember the disciples had toiled all night long so i want to say a word to all the people out there who have worked really hard i want to say a word to the people who have labored really hard i want to say to the people who have gone i want to say to the people who have been prayer warriors and i want you to know this your labor is not in vain it will be rewarded Every sacrifice matters and every prayer counts. Now, here's my closing, John 21, verse six. And he said to them, cast the net on the other side of the boat. Cast the net on the right side. They've been casting it on the left side. Cast the net. Oh, guys, I know you're tired. I know you've been working all night long but it's harvest time and I have a magnetic anointing, but mm -hmm. if you'll be flexible enough to not just do it the one way you know, and if you will be flexible enough to do what I do when I say do it, cast your net. It does say on the right side, 
what it could say is on the other side. If you will cast your net on the other side, it's a test. It's a test. And if you will do that, you, you will get to be a part of seeing, pulling in the nets full of fish that you have been praying for. Wow, so good, James. And I just love and can't emphasize enough to the body right now because one of our one of the areas where the enemy is is um, trying, attempting to get some ground, is to turn us against each other simply because we didn't agree with something someone said. But right. most of the time, I found that it's not either or; it is both and. And so it's a matter of listening very carefully and gleaning and yeah we have to extract the precious okay. from the worthless and sometimes you know a, a full understanding isn't there but that's how we help one another like you know when uh, people have conversation with me and we're talking about something and mm -hmm. if, if they say well i would like to challenge that thinking a little bit i welcome it because because i get bigger in my understanding just like in daniel people of insight people of understanding it it, it doesn't just come from thinking you have all the right answers it's from it's from listening to God in other people as well. So I just want to encourage everyone. Um, you know, we're we're very good at wanting to just say things, but we're we're not as good most of the time at listening. And so we need to listen. What is the Spirit of God saying? And uh, and conversation. The word conversation. The Lord told me to call this this um, uh, media piece the conversation room because He says the conversation is so important. In fact. In Hebrew culture, they would have conversation, but it was conversational debates. And they would even take positions that were opposite of another person just to bring out the whole truth. Mm -hmm. And um, it, was, it, was, it was part of their culture. Now, someone told me that, so I'm assuming that that's accurate. Um, but I liked it anyway. So, um, <laughs> you know, because I, I just think it's awesome. So um, just want to encourage you all to really enjoy conversation and don't get all heated and don't get upset when you hear something that isn't the same as what you believe go to the lord find jesus on his throne in it and love each other well just love well uh stephen do you have any final remarks that you would like to make before we pray can i read a scripture yeah of course you can okay. do whatever you're this, led to this do. is from jeremiah 33 <clears throat> we'll just continue on we we know that as we as we as we call to him he's going to answer and he's going to show us great things but if we if we go down to at verse 10 and this to me that that's part of the, i believe the season we're heading into is that you know god's god wants everything to be shaken and disrupted but but there there really is there is really hope on the horizon and i think Absolutely. that's part of it we just we just need to see that um but see it, it takes time to actually get to that horizon. And so with that, I mean, embrace the shakings. And so more than anything, just hang on to the Lord in the midst of the shakings. But th this, here's what the Lord says, okay? This is what the Lord says. You have said, this is a desolate land where the people and the animals are, have disappeared. Yet in the empty streets of Jerusalem and the United States and everywhere else on the planet that's in lockdown and whatever else is going on. And the towns of Judah, there will be heard once more the sound of joy and laughter. The joyful voices of bridegrooms and brides will be heard again, along with the joyous songs of the people bringing Thanksgiving offerings to the Lord. Absolutely. In California. And they will sing even in California. Give thanks to the Lord, heaven's armies, for the Lord is good and his faithful love and mercy endures forever. Oh, and, and I will restore the prosperity of this land to what it was in the past, says the Lord. That's good news. That's awesome. <laughs> I love it. That's one thing I love about you, Stephen, is that you are such an ambassador of hope. You always impregnate people with a joyful expectation of a good outcome. And I love that. And it's so beautiful when you see all the different motivations and people, you know, the different ways that God has wired them, the different gifts, the different expressions. I, I just love you so much for the, the hope giver that you are and for the truth bearer that you are as well. So we have so much to look forward to, you know, the, 
The Lord will work everything together for good. Whatever the enemy tries, he will work it together for good. Even honestly, in this COVID thing, I, I am so blessed to be at home. I've been at home since March. I think I've been out on the road for two weeks in the midst of that. But other than that, I've been home for two months and I or no more, more than that, March, April, May, June, and now July, almost four months. And I love it. And I have had more fruit in the ministry since I've been at home than when I was out on the road before that. Wow. We have been blessed financially more than we were before that. You know, we have been, um, you know, just having more family time than ever. Families are getting stronger. In our church, families are getting stronger, you know, because they're together. Uh, children are at home with their parents more. I mean, there's so many blessings that have come out of this time that we can be so grateful for and just glean on everything good because when you live in the blessing realm of God, it doesn't matter what's shaking around you, you are secure in that blessing. And God plus nothing equals everything that you need. <laughs> <clears throat> so again, I just want to um, um, invite you to join the firewall. Seriously, firewallusa.com. Just pray, pray, pray. This is a time to pray, pray, pray. God is speaking to almost every ministry I know. In fact, when I started the firewall, I contacted 50 ministries within the next, or within the, you know, a couple of days after I got the revelation. And all, every single one of them said, yes, we will stand with you on the wall. We will put people on the wall. One of my ministry friends, Barbara Yoder, has over 600 people praying in the same hour together. And it's it's just like, it's just crazy. And now there's, Hundreds of ministries involved now bringing their people, their churches are praying, but we need more because we're going to birth the greatest move. Haggai said the latter or the former glory, the latter glory of the house is greater than the former. So if we've seen former great revivals, awakenings, reformations, what's it going to be like if we all get together in unity and birth light and life and glory in this hour? Oh my goodness, I just love to dream about it. I want you to dream about it. I want you to go from this place and have conversation about it and get everyone stirred. So go to the firewallusa.com and sign up for your hour of prayer. And also, if any of you feel at all led to um, donate, uh, there are administrative needs to keeping that, that going. And so if you feel uh, led to just so into that, we appreciate that too. But we've we built it for the Lord and for you, so uh, we take financial responsibility for it. But if you uh, should desire to donate, we would so appreciate the partnership in that. So thank you. So James, do you want to uh, close us out in prayer here and pray for our people? And Amen. Hey, Father, we just love you. And we are so grateful that we are here for such a time as this. And whether these watchers and listeners live in Europe or South America, in the Pacific Rim, in Mother Russia, in Africa, in North America, the Caribbean, or wherever, we call forth a global prayer army to birth the global prophetic purpose. And we declare God has healing of the land on his mind. I just keep seeing, I know it's beginning, I just keep seeing a repeated vision in this time together of outdoor worship, outdoor praise, mm. outdoor prayer. I see it on the beaches. Woo. I see it in the country. Oh, wow. I see it in rural settings. I see tents being set. Up. I see healing, mobile healing rooms, and I see outdoor worship, and I see outdoor praise, and I see healings. I see these things, it all coming together for such a time as this. And I say, do not call the West Coast the left coast, but declare <laughs> the West Coast <laughs> as a righteous coast Woo! for such a time as this. Amen. Amen. It's awesome. Amen. Thank you yes. so much, James. And uh, 
for those of you who are not yet acquainted with James Gall's resources, he is one of the most fruitful uh, resource creators that I know of and really good stuff. Everything um, is, is so rich, so biblically based. So I just want to encourage you to go on GodEncountersIsIt.com. Yes. GodEncounters.com and, and seek out his teaching. He also has uh, mentorship classes online. Uh, James, I know that you're, you're doing something right now, right, online? Oh, yeah. I so mean, do you want to share, teach, share with what I might help three, them? Oh, thanks. Thank you, Patricia. I teach three online classes every year. They're different every year. So this fall, which I did a television show with Patricia, the one I'm doing this fall, and I'm writing up all the notes right now, is called Revival Breakthrough, Preparations for the Great Harvest. So if you go to jamesgall.com or godencounters.com and just sign up, I send out weekly articles, free audio and video messages. The one that goes out tonight is Hope That Lights Up Any Night with an audio video, the article, the message, and so, and I have a mentoring program like Patricia does, but I want you to know this. Be connected to the head of the body mm -hmm. yourself. Yeah, and come on. <laughs> be connected to a local expression of the body of Christ and take advantage of all of the resources that the Holy Spirit directs you to because today, the knowledge of the glory of the Lord will cover the earth as the waters cover the seas, and you can be a partaker of that realm. Right on. Thank wow. you, James. Wow. And Stephen, I know that you also um, offer so much, and, um, you know, and thank you for your heart for missions especially and i know that you've got a lot of projects going on in all kinds of different areas but is there any particular resource that, or uh, program that you have that you think would help our people grow in the lord yeah so i'm actually in the process of uh writing a book uh, everyday prophetic and it's going to demystify and just make it simple you know so that'll be out actually out uh the first part of uh, 2021 and then right now, actually, with our transition to Dallas, we, we literally are just setting a table of God's presence and we're gathering the reformers, the firebrands, we're on. gathering those that have a prophetic grace and the worshipers that will war and contend to see the glory cover the earth. And, you know, and it's, uh, it's, it's, it's a fun, it's a fun new, uh, fun new season for us, let's put it that way. And so, and we've got other resources as well. We've got healing schools and prophetic schools. You can find those actually at globalpresence.com. And there's other resources there as well. And I just wanna say thank you, Patricia. And it's always just an honor just to, to be in your presence as well as uh, James Gall and so many of you. I just am so thankful. You guys have helped form and fashion who uh, myself and my wife Renee are and even what our ministry expresses. And I'm just really, really grateful again, even for this opportunity to be with you today and just to be part of the conversation. So. Oh, it's wonderful to have you, Stephen, and give, give Renee my love. And, and I'm so excited for all that you're doing. Um, and also, uh, again, firewallusa.com, uh, sign up for prayer. And if you are watching and you are not in fellowship right now because maybe your church isn't meeting or can't meet or you live in an isolated area or you're between churches or whatever, I, I want to say this is an extremely important time to be connected and to gather and to, and to have good pastoring as well. And so um, I just want to encourage you that if you feel like you're floundering and you're not connected, to check out our web church. Um, I love pastoring the web church. I've, I founded it back in 2008, but now I'm actually pastoring a group within the web church. I'm pastoring um, American, all the um, American uh, members that are coming in right now are coming into my group. So if you want to find out more information about that, because we've got pastors that will you know, take care of people from other nations and that. Um, but go to patriciaking.com and look up the web church tab on there and you can find out more information. So God bless you all. And thank you again to my guests and uh, all of you, all of you just go out and continue to 
cultivate conversation about Jesus Christ, his goodness, the great things he's doing in this hour, and the things he's calling us to. We'll see you next time.